Hello, welcome to Inspiring Stories Podcast. Here we interview authors and soon-to-be authors about the inspiring stories that inspire their books and the inspiring stories within their books and the hopes of inspiring others to create and share their own stories. I am Karen Light of Studio Light Illustration, where we transform visions to visuals on our quest to create a more human world through the magic of storytelling. Find out more at karenlight.com for now. StudioLightIllustration.com is soon coming. I want to give a quick shout out to my friends and sponsors at Fig Factor Media. Fig Factor Media is an international publishing company with heart. They specialize in self-development, anthologies, business, and children's books that bring messages of hope, inspiration, and encouragement into the world. Find out more at FigFactorMedia.com. All links will be in the description of this podcast episode. Today, I'm here with Dwayne Scott Cerny, author of a fascinating book called Selling Dead People's Things. Dwayne is the co-owner of the Broadway Antique Market, home to 75 top dealers, and it's Chicago's largest multi-dealer shopping destination. Dwayne's background includes being awarded a poetry scholarship, founding a successful legal word processing firm, creating a record label, and creating his own band, Danny Alias, which is still bootlegged throughout the world and is even legitimately released in Canada, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and as he says, other fandoms of obscurity. Welcome to the show, Dwayne. How are you? I'm great, Karen. Glad to be here. Good. Well, let's kick off by you just briefly telling us about your book. Well, um, I didn't really think I had a book in me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had done a, a, lot of, a lot of different types of writing. Obviously, thank you for the introduction. Um, and then I would write uh, poems and, and, and song lyrics and articles uh, and even a couple of plays, but like a book uh, that just seemed daunting and what would I ever possibly have to say. <laughs> um, so, but you know, then I, 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 know, I noticed that um, uh, uh, memoirs were really, really popular and I thought, well, yeah, I'm not all that interesting, <laughs> but I meet a lot of interesting people and I've been in a lot of interesting situations. So what I created was what I'm calling a hybrid of a memoir in that, you know, I tell my story from, you know, pretty much like day one, uh, just as a, little, as a little background and then how I kind of stumbled into the world of antiques and vintage of which I knew nothing about, nothing. Mm -hmm. And so for, um, uh, those experiences um, really challenged me in my writing, but then what I realized is that my stories really weren't all that interesting, but those stories of others were fascinating. We're, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, not that, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fiction kind of person. I, 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 I really work best when I experience a story and then write it down, <laughs> what, what happened. So that's what the book is. The book is a hybrid of, of, um, of my life, but then uh, pretty much rough and tough, like 20 of the most unusual um, house calls or estates that I've been involved in. And mm -hmm. it's, there's some famous people and odd situations. And there's, it's, people tell me it's, uh, it's funny and scary and uh, poignant and sometimes all in the same sentence. <laughs> yeah, I just read the one where you went under the guy's porch, and I was like, "That I would never be doing that." <laughs> right, right. And then, yeah, no spoiler alert there, but like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, what, what that was, what, what that was, and yeah. who, and who he was, um, right. which kind of goes back to you know my you know kind of subtext in the book is you know people are their things, um, and uh, people, yeah, everyone collects things. I think you collect salt and pepper shakers, right? Mistaken in that? I, think, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I thought you did. I could be, I could be wrong. <laughs> but everybody collects something. Um, yeah, sure. So that's what really prompted it. And then um, um, uh, that, that's, that's, that's how the whole idea came to, came to pass. And what was it about those stories that made you want to actually put it into a book form and share it with the world? Like what, what, you know, so lots of people have really interesting stories, but not lots of people actually go through the process of creating a book and putting it out there. Well, there's I would say, process, there's got to learn publishing. I mean, there's a lot to go through. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 
one thing happened, which was very, very significant, was that I um, was encouraged to take a writing class here in New York. And it's um, through uh, Gretchen Cryer, um, who's a playwright and an actress, and she's the uh, uh, mother of John Cryer, Two and a Half Men on TV. Mm -hmm. And okay. every, every year she would take like 10 or 12 people and do this just immersive writing class. And you couldn't do anything uh, prepared in advance. You just showed up and you had to do the writing right there. <laughs> and uh, you, you'd write just, everything had to be real. Everything had to be true. And I kind of was at a loss of what to write. Um, and I thought, gee, you know, there's been all these kind of experiences in states that I've, you know, that I've processed. And I thought, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna start writing those. And it went over really, really well. Um, so it, it just kind of got in, into my head that from talking to all my other antique dealer friends and we'd all be like, oh gosh, I was at this house, you wouldn't believe what I saw. And, and, it's, and it's, it's definitely between hoarders and then high-end hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> high-end hoarders have some great stuff, but, the, but they're still hoarders. So just kind of a, a, between all my uh, other antique dealer friends, we all have stories. But it was kind of just the, that class made me sit down and, and write them and then uh, be uh, grilled about them. Because it had to be true. It has to be true. And, and a number of the stories people will read and go, like, this can't be true. But as is the piece that was in the New York, New York Times, which is, you know, vetted, let me tell you, to get into the New York Times. That's, right. a, true, that's a true story. Mm -hmm. um, and, and many of them have a rather O. Henry feel to them is what I've been kind of told. Mm -hmm. So, and I kind of like that is to hold off to, if there is a surprise or a twist, you find out about it at the end. And that's yeah. often how it is when you're processing an escape too. Like, who was this person? What, what was all this about? Yeah, it's um, like you think first and then you have to keep going backwards, right? Yeah, so I would, so it started that way. It started to just, I really tried to write down what were my strongest stories. What were, what I think were my best stories. And then, and then kind of went from there. I think that was the, really the process. So five years later, we're having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes time, right? It's a lot of perseverance through the yes. process. Yeah. But it sounds like what I hear you saying, too, is, is just through actually starting to write it, it created some, sort of a momentum. And you really enjoyed uh, the interaction you were having with other people through this creation process. And a, a, a number of the stories, there were other uh, you know, antique dealer friends of mine there. And so I could show them the story and they'd say, you know, you left out this part. And mm -hmm. I'd say, oh, I forgot that. Or um, they'd say, well, you left out that part. And I said, you know, I, I didn't want to bring that up. That <laughs> went from, you know, that was it, <laughs> it didn't serve the purpose of the story. So the, 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 the editorial, you know, mm -hmm. end of it. Um, but it, it never failed that I would be in the middle of one story and I would go like, oh, I've got to, I got to do this other story. I have to write. People need to know uh, <laughs> what what I found under the porch. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway. Everyone will find out what was under the porch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's nothing illegal, folks. Trust us. No. No. It's it, it surprised me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it surprised. Kind of and and then uh, you to your whole like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? All of the thoughts in your head, and <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. Scary. Um, but. The, um, it's only now that I kind of understand what I did and I throw it out there for other authors. So I think a lot of us go and say, gee, I have to know, I have to know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. No, you have to, you have to know it well enough and you, sh and you need to do it well. And we'll go back, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to this. But I think in the end, you need to make an amazing product. Mm -hmm. It needs to be an incredible amazing, <laughs> fantastic, the best product you can create. And then afterwards, if you even get through that and get it out there, people will tell you what you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I've learned is that from, people come back to me and say, well, this was my favorite chapter or this other was my, there's, I'm always trying to you know, gauge, well, what, what worked and what didn't. And I'm still getting that feedback from, from so many people. And I, and I've learned so much. And it's like you were saying, saying earlier, um, uh, just talking, talking to other people. It's, 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 it's people. It's all comes down to people <laughs> and that, and that interaction. Mm -hmm. I always really enjoy that, you know, being a visual artist, you know, there's, I love the process of just creating on my own, but 
I learned so much more about my work half the time when it was being shown and I was having these conversations and I understood how it actually affected people. Um, and, you know, a part of me just wanted to make something great and was pulled by something and then later found out why I did it, you know? Uh, yeah. So I totally resonate with what you say, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to understand it all when you're doing it. And I think we all beat ourselves up about that. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. You would just throw that out there. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, yeah. It's collection <laughs> and, and, and purpose, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. And, and it's often a thing that will keep people from taking the next step, right? Trying to figure everything out yes. along the way or right. explain it before they've even done the thing. And, yeah, every, and everyone says this. It's any, any type of art, the joy is in creating it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Afterwards, you know, anything, when we talk about self-publishing, self-publishing is you are starting a business. Mm -hmm. A business, which is uh, lots of stuff that comes along with that. Uh, now, that can certainly hold people back, and that might be okay, <laughs> because you, you just have to accept that. This is, this is, you're going to need to run this as a business, which means you're going to have to have some uh, financial or at least accounting skills or find somebody who does, who can help you with those types of things. You know, I'm, I'm a great believer in people. I've, got, I've, just have, I've, I've been so lucky. I, have, I just have amazing people who've helped me to get this far with it. I, I never could have done this without, without uh, yeah. oh, uh, Kim and Jill and Bethany, and I have a whole cast of these wonderful women who helped make this book happen. So I am blessed. <laughs> How did you start that journey of finding those people? Sometimes that is exactly another thing that stops folks is just, I don't know who to even reach out to. How would you describe that process for yourself? I did a lot of research online and I was looking for, um, well, I started with looking, I needed an editor. And, and anyone, again, who's considering doing this, you have to have an editor, hire an editor. <laughs> it's it's it, self-publishing the the quality of books that are out there now are so much better than they were five years ago or 10 years ago. And that speaks to authors hiring good editors yeah. <laughs> and creating really good products. And that elevates the whole market. And so, you know, now when you, you rarely hear anybody use the word like vanity press, but 20 years ago, that was the expression, you know, and it's not a, it's not a good term. So, so I started out um, searching online for, I, I, I wanted an editor who was in Chicago, somebody that if I needed to meet with him or her, I could. Um, and I just did this through uh, um, uh, searches online, Facebook, um, and I think I probably interviewed half a dozen people. Um, and um, I, I met Bethany and, uh, um, I didn't know a lot about her, and she was the former um, president of Quip. I didn't even know what Chicago Women in Publishing. I didn't even know what Quip was. Uh, um, and she um, she took a look at the at the manuscript, and she says, "You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do two or three chapters. I'm gonna edit two or three chapters. If you if you like what I did, hire me. If you don't, don't hire me, and you can keep the work I did." Wow. I, wow. Um, yeah. And it's been, it's, and through, a bit simultaneously that I met Kim, who is the uh, book list, um, mutual friend of ours, who's uh, proofread the book, I don't know how many times, that poor woman. <laughs> and, she's so, <laughs> and she's so good, they're both so good. And uh, they led me to uh, Bethany, and Bethany has helped me with the marketing. Um, mm -hmm. And there's some other people too, which I'll start blanking out other names. But, yeah, but it sounds like you kind of found a person and through that person, there were networks that became available to you, um, which is, is I think what's important for people to understand is, you know, just start with a person. Um, and likely if there are anything to do with publishing or even in my world, illustrating, I'm very connected with different folks who can help people out. So yeah. And, and yeah. check the app. <laughs> Check them out by all means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right. I mean, I'm looking at you. It was like you're hiring somebody. You, you're absolutely hiring somebody, and it's a job. And professional people act professionally. So um, I think you, you, every once in a while, you know, in anything, you make a, you know, you hire the wrong plumber, <laughs> and yeah. something bad happens. Yeah, kind of life. Uh, um, but in this, I was extremely lucky. And again, you know, if, if Jill said Kim was good. And then Kim said, you know, uh, uh, Bethany is good. That was almost good enough for me. Um, right. And then when, and you know, that you actually had, could, could work with somebody too, you know, that you gel, that you kind of, 
spoke the same language. And I was also lucky in that everybody involved really liked the book. So mm -hmm. they were excited about it. And honestly, I get just as excited when, you know, they tell me they've made, you know, uh, more contacts or it's been, it's good. It, the whole thing has been, I think, a really good experience for all of us. And I'm, awesome. I just, I yeah. just like, you know, just give yeah. everybody a hug on that. So um, it's, it's just, such a collaborative process, isn't it? Like, that's what most people don't know either. Like, you're really not on your own. <laughs> no, no. For anybody yeah. who just thinks you're going to, you know, sit in your little attic and scribble away, <laughs> well, you can. But if you, once you want to really uh, bring this out again as a, as a phenomenal product that it has to be uh, mm -hmm. in, every, in every essence, um, you, need, you need people. You need, you, need, you need good people. Mm -hmm. So what would you say has been um, the most rewarding thing about this project for you? Um, I think the, the people who bought the book and um, have friended me like on Facebook or, or sent me their stories, uh, the people that I've met, um, such touching things. Uh, any number of couples have told me that they bought the, you know, one of them bought the book and then and read it and liked it and said, you know, every night I read to my husband or wife uh, <laughs> a chapter. And it is the kind of book you can do that too. You yeah. can jump in and out of it because it's a collection of you know uh, loosely connected stories. Um, mm -hmm. And I I was very touched by that, and I've heard that from multiple people. So that's I mean, now that you say that, it kind of reminds me um, in my youth when we read those like scary stories books, and they had little they were called scary stories, like different volumes of them. But you would read out loud to each other these scary mm -hmm. stories. It's something you did when you got together with your friends. Yeah, and it has that like same mysterious kind of feel because none of those are like super scary but like there's a little mystery and a little like ooh, uneasiness about them that you're like what's going on here where did this come from <laughs> yeah yeah and, and a lot of times you know people's spouses are like it's say well you know he or she's not really a reader and all that but they want to share this experience you know mm -hmm. that, that that they had um and oh gosh there's been um people who there was a couple up in Wisconsin went and bought 10 books and then gave them to uh, all the libraries in Madison, Wisconsin. They wanted to make sure all the libraries had it and they, as a gift to the libraries, who does that? <laughs> how, oh, how, that's great. <laughs> how great is that? Because it, it touched them so, um, mm -hmm. and they, and they wanted people to experience this, you know, this book. Um, so I think it's absolutely, I get back to that. It's been the people that I've met. The people mm -hmm. that I met and continue to meet at, honestly every day I get I get something from somebody from, oh my gosh you know <laughs> um, from and from all over the world it's uh, this book this book is uh, it we, we set it up so that I mean obviously it's on Amazon um, but on a number of platforms so anybody can really get it pretty much anywhere so mm -hmm. you know I I think I made two dours in Japan last month so <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Well, I think one of the, the reasons maybe why people are really connecting it too is I keep noticing this underlying theme in the parts that I've been able to read of like um, you really going after something you're interested in, like your joy and your passion translates and it's a big theme of the book, you know, um, from what I haven't been able to read all of it, but that's, I got that very quickly from the three or four essays I've been able to read. Um, and so I don't know if people are saying something to you about that, but for me, that's very, that's an inspiring thing to read about. Um, it's a fun thing to read about. And, you know, people are hungry for people who are following their passions. Um, they're trying to figure out how to do that. They want to have more of that in their life. And, and this is something, thank you. <laughs> um, um, and this is something which did start as a, as a hobby you know, for me, I did this on the side when I had my computer business. And um, uh, it was something I just did, did, did on, on the weekends. Um, uh, but to your, to your point, um, I do hear from a lot of people about how um, serious and engaged and uh, I, I am with the people that I write about. Um, but uh, I'll say respectful with a capital R, um, of their, it's not about making fun of anybody and, 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 at all, or even what they collect or what they do, or that I have great reverence for this. Um, part of it is, you know, and any number of these, the people who were 
who were alive and uh, given, gave me permission uh, to, to write about these things. Um, or there's a couple where it's the, uh, the families have given me permission to write about it. So that's a, that's, again, that's a, that's a, a blessing and an obligation and I have to convey that correctly. Um, so, um, I, yeah, I so we use the word love, but, but I certainly love, I love what I do. And I, I, and I just seem to, um, I think I just stumbled onto something. And when I, people ask me to you know, quickly, like to you know, describe the book and, and, you know, I'll, you know, say, um, you know, you know, 98% of the books that are out there about antiques and vintage are all about what something is, mm -hmm. defining what it is, determining what it is, um, explaining what it is, and then how much it's worth. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> That's yeah. it. And yet, when people watch like Roadshow, which has been on forever and a really good show, um, that backstory about how they came to acquire the item, oh yeah, I mean, okay, maybe they found it at a yard sale for a nickel. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> but when it's a, but you know, a lot of it will be like, I got this from my uncle who I never knew, and that's that always that always just be honest got me off that part mm -hmm. of it. And I think I think that's people really relate to it. That's also why that show is so successful. Now, yeah, then there's the payoff of what's it worth, you know, today or. Yesterday, or wah, wah, you know, the, <laughs> when the decreasing value is that not everything goes up, goes up in value. But yeah. so, but to my knowledge, I, I did some research, and there was a book in the '60s by a guy in the UK, and he wrote something similar to this mm -hmm. um, about the stuff. <laughs> yeah, about the stuff. But, but that's the beautiful thing is that like it's all different stuff, so it's all different stories. Yes. Yes. If you just go, and I, and I'm thinking about like the, the pieces that of a couple pieces of furniture that I really care about. Like the story is really important to me. Like I usually share if anybody comments or if they are into my home for the first time, I'm like, Oh, you know, my grandfather made these and then it was here and then it was here and now I have it and here's how it's changed. And you know, like it's like got a story to it that we almost like telling too, you know, we have those kinds of things. Oh, exactly. And it is, as I've kind of learned and, and relate that, you know, these objects for the most part go on and on and on. Um, and we're the temporaries. <laughs> They're much more permanent than we yeah, are. Yes. So it's, yeah. it, I mean, you know, if, if, the, if, you know, the, your grandfather's chair or desk or something could tell stories about you. <laughs> yes. A <laughs> hundred years from now. Well, oh, it's yeah. long, it's lovely, you know, <laughs> I know that's a bit out there, but I love that too, that perspective like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could tell a lot of stories. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. It's occurring to me while you're speaking about this too that it's um it's also like these windows into people's lives, right? And it's it's kind of comforting because we get to see their like idiosyncrasies, their little quirks. And like, we're like, Oh, I've got idiosyncrasies and, and quirks and these people have them too, you know? And it, it makes everything a little more human, you know? Yeah, very much. I've heard that quite a bit. The, the comment would be like, I'm, Oh, thank you. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> or I'm not as crazy. Or, or I'm not as twisted or, that and then no and that's and that's that's normal i mean uh, we all get uh, uh obsessive about things um mm. uh and it's it's a, it, a, a collect, collecting is an interesting uh, concept <laughs> um it seems to uh uh fill many different types of roles in in our lives i, I it um would First, if this could be like the hunt, let's just say you're, you know, you just love for whatever reason. I, I always love whatever the reason is of how something started. That, that always intrigues me. How did you get started collecting paperweights or monkeys or advertising rulers or, you know, I go on and on, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll say, oh, you know, I got it as a gift when I was a kid and then I had the first one. And then, but then it becomes this hunt. They have to go out and find ones that they don't have, or maybe a better one, a better version of one that they do have. You know, mine has a chip. This one's perfect. I'll, I'll sell the chip one. Oh, I'll, I'll give the chip one away or whatever. But this, but so it, it, you think about it though, that, that fills your days. Mm -hmm. Those, that hunting and certain, you know, maybe you, you go on a vacation and you're, 
still looking for for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. At that that uh, piece of Lalique, uh, you know, whatever. And not all these things have to be expensive either. No. I mean, look at how guys are with sporting memorabilia. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but as I always say too, you know, collecting and vintage is a fashion. So look how, you know, crazy people get over, uh, you know, uh, vintage clothes. I mean, and I always say when, when you know, guys will make fun of like women in their shoes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, well, guys with like shaving memorabilia or shaving stuff is a big hey, deal. With, yeah. With, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vinyl, guys with their vinyl. Mm -hmm. eh, you know, you've got 20 pairs of shoes and he's, he's you know, making a scene and, and he's, he's buying 50, 50 uh, 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 vinyl records. You know, yeah, uh, I guess so, that's true. you know, like, oh, come on, don't you? Yeah, oh, I know that one. Black. I with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you say has been one of the biggest challenges of this project for you? Um, well, the <laughs> uh, getting into bookstores, mm -hmm. getting into, it's again, you go back to it being a business, and um, and again, everyone I was involved with had said, just let that go. You know, if you get it on Amazon, people are going to be able to find it. Don't worry about that. Don't kill yourself. You know, but, um, you know, former English major here, and I you know, love bookstores, just wandering around bookstores for hours. So I was just going like, oh, gee, I just, I, you know, I, I got to get this into bookstores. Well, you know, first off, brick and mortar is having a really tough time. Bookstores Definitely. have been closing for years. Yeah. Um, uh, and you're competing with all the big guys. And, and the little guys and the small presses for all that shelf space. So um, uh, now, and I have been able to get into some bookstores, um, but you'd think like oh, independent bookstores would embrace it, also because it's been an Amazon bestseller twice and once in Canada. <laughs> Got to put that out. Got to put that out there. Yeah. Um, uh, and but no, no. I, no matter what I did, I, there's I, there's bookstores in Chicago that um, I, no, I can't get them. So I, I found that to be very, very frustrating. Um, mm -hmm. I did get into, they did a, it's in the Midwest, they got into Barnes and Noble over the holidays. I, I did, I did make that happen. That's pretty good. Yeah. With, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that absolutely a feather in my cap and um, uh, uh, not, uh, not without uh, anguish. <laughs> but I, just, I think I needed to check that off and then I, and then I, I let that go because there's so many other things right. to do. Can you briefly kind of describe what that process is to try to get into a Barnes and Nobles, let's say? You fill out an application, which is a, maybe 20 pages. Uh, I, they may require a DNA sample now. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or future tracking, you know, don't ask me. <laughs> Why should we do yeah, it's, it? No, it's a very smart application. Why? Why should we carry this book? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I think there's even something in there that says there cannot be a typo. Mm -hmm. In the manuscript, in the book, in the book, uh, not a one. So again, I'm, I'm going to tell people that it needs to be perfect. It needs to be perfect, but but that's a good thing. That's a good yeah. thing. You just got to try harder. So don't don't look too close. I'm sure there's a typo in this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big book. There's got to be a typo. I know. I, I I've seen classics with typos. Like oh, right. So it's like, <laughs> oh. but but that's you know that's that that you know that's that. Um, and then I let it, I just let it go because, yeah. um, it was, uh, uh, there's, there's, there's what, what the other thing I stumbled on, which has been great, really, really great is that, um, uh, antique stores now carry it. Oh, and, that's good. Yeah. Where antique stores, some antique stores will, will carry new books, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have much less competition if I can get into a big antique store. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have none in that the owner read it, loved it, puts it on the counter, and it sells itself. It just sells itself. Yeah, yeah um, you've got your perfect market walking in the door every day. Yeah, there. And it's, yeah. And oh, so often somebody will be like, I'm, you know, uh, oh, I know, I know who has to have this book. So yeah. they're buying it for someone else. Yes. But I've had people do that and then come back and say, I know I need a copy for myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've been, I put my toe in the water on that last last Christmas, something like that. That's been fantastic. So I would tell authors, look for alternative ways to distribute your book. Mm -hmm. 
It's something okay. that because you're not, it's the bookstores for the amount of time you're going to spend to spend to get in there. Think outside the box, yeah. and maybe, maybe depending what it is, you know, if you're doing a cookbook, when you should be into like get into some foodie stores or you know some some alternative, you know, uh, uh, gastronomic restaurants or be you know, <laughs> talk to people. Who do they know? But find alternative ways to distribute your book. Um, then that I think it'll be because you know nobody wants to do a book and then you know you sell you know fifty copies of it after all after all this it's mm -hmm. be a little disheartening so um, yeah. Um, yeah I think that's great advice yeah and and I've, I've had a, you know, a brick and mortar store for thirty years so I I do know a little bit about marketing but I know you just have to be reinventing yourself constantly just mm -hmm. thinking about thinking about different ways to promote something and, and, and market it. Uh, and not, you know, and they're not all going to work, of course, but just to try right. things as inexpensively as possible. Um, but, uh, a lot of times I, with this, I've kind of broken into places just because people said, we're like, we're kind of shocked you came up with this. <laughs> and we'll, you know, they always feel sorry for you. That's okay. <laughs> so that, if that opens the door, feel sorry for me. You know, yeah. I'm a little off. Let's, we'll let them do this and see what happens. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Is there any question that you wish people would ask you more about your book? Um, that, that, that's good. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Um, I think... Um, why did I choose the stories that I did and what stories didn't make it? Oh, what stories yeah. were cut? Uh-huh. Um, because stories were cut. Uh, mm -hmm. And it wasn't for length. Um, I tried the, the, the book really unintentionally, believe, believe this or not. Um, the book does have a bit of a paranormal, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, <laughs> slide to it here, here and there. Um, and so, I mean, because there's probably four or five stories that uh, things happen, which is why the word inexplicable is in the title, because they're going, I can't figure that out. But, you know, when you're in the antique business, everybody bumps into odd things. You just say, well, I don't know what that is. It's just be, you know, just a coincidence or whatever. So um, when I saw that kind of happening with the manuscript, um, I said, you know, I don't want this to be too heavy on the paranormal. Um, and so there were a couple other things that I thought people just won't, you know, I want you people to believe the book because this is, these are things that happen. So I didn't want them questioning other stories because of that. Uh, right. So, um, that so um, I mean, I did have somebody ask me, <laughs> which I thought was great. Why didn't I write a story about a haunted Eames chair? <laughs> 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 which is like I said it doesn't work that way yeah <laughs> because I didn't find a haunted that eats wasn't right? actually something that happened happy. Happy. why didn't you write about you know a haunted set of dishes well because that never happened you know um, <laughs> I didn't have to make stuff up that was just it I just mm -hmm. had to work, kind of really report it accurately and efficiently and hopefully maybe dramatically um yeah. and if something was funny i went with, with, with what was funny or human or or uh spooky then i went with it if that's if that's what the story you know re required so so i that's the one thing that people don't really ask because because there were, were stories that were cut yeah and and i just another kind of theme that came up as you're speaking again is is this idea that um reality is pretty strange like we don't actually have to make things up for to have fascinating strange mysterious things happen all the time right <laughs> exactly yeah 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 every day or, or cuz oftentimes you have kind of the coincidences of things mm -hmm. okay what are the odds it's oh, I love that stuff. yeah what are the odds and then uh -huh. you know, maybe um, and you don't really know why that is. I mean, every once in a while, you can have a day where, like, just things, there aren't enough of them, but things fall into place. Mm -hmm. And then there are other days, it's like, are you kind of kidding me? Because it could be one, one, I'm going to burst into flames. I mean, could one more horrible thing happen? You're like, you can't get a break. Yeah. Are, we, all, we all have those days, too, right? Um, and that's also what I think you've got to go and say, kind of, you know, flip the, flip the script. And say, yeah. Okay, 
stop. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're not doing any more of a day like that. <laughs> no, no, plot twist. There's that yeah, great quote, like plot <laughs> twist. <laughs> I'm done with today. I'm done tomorrow. It's and, time to go to bed now. <laughs> and, and that's really healthy, too, because, you know, with, 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 certainly with writing, people be just like, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Write something yeah. else. Do something just else. Fight it. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bully through this. Oh, that's why it, it, it is. <laughs> but then you lose, then you lose that joy aspect, which is what so many people connect to. I think when they really gravitate towards something, they really sense somebody's passion in it, their joy in it. Yes. You know? I mean, I know, I know any number of, uh, of composers and other writers and all that, and they all say the pleasure is in the creating of the art, um, as I'm sure an artist would be if you were painting or whatever it is, whatever it is that you're doing, that joy. I mean, if you're not happy doing that, why are you even doing that? Yeah, you stop and do something else for a while until, I mean, you don't art all the time. You take yeah. a break. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Back when you can enjoy it again. Yeah, um, and, and the other thing I wanted to mention too, I was glad yeah. we were gonna do this today was, um, can I give an opportunity uh, that, you know, I think it's really important to be surrounded by like-minded people and positive people. Now we don't always have that option. We do with our friends. We don't necessarily with our families <laughs> or, and people understanding that, that artistic angst mm -hmm. <laughs> that we have, that people have to, to create something. Not everybody has that. And it, and in a lot of ways, it, I could certainly see it be, it would be, a relief not to be so plagued by having that creative gene and I don't mean that in any kind of a boisterous way I just just mean it's like I have to do something with this I just, ah. <laughs> I'm not fulfilled I'm not why am I on this planet if I don't uh, paint that painting write that book write that song you know um, uh, and others don't get it and they're downers you, you, you do not need those people you should keep them as friends and family but don't talk about your art with them. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to be supportive. It's, you know that. You know mm -hmm. that. And um, the creative process is so delicate to begin with. And the, the, the line I came up with last, last night when I was thinking about this is, is, you know, don't invite a bull into your own personal china shop. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I love that. That's perfect. You're right. Um, That's a great metaphor. And because be I completely agree. It's and it's not always from bad intentions. Even it's that like sometimes your creativity takes you to doing some very impractical things. You know, I've worked with writers who've taken out of their four hundred one k's or like used up their savings or you know quit their jobs and yes. you know people who are just trying to help them or be supportive say things that can be kind of dream crushing. Yes, if, if you let it, if you let it. If you, if, if you let it. And we all have those people in our life. But again, most yeah. of those people, they don't have that creative bug. And so yeah. they're, they're, not, they're never going to understand it. You know? mm -hmm. um, uh, they, they, they may later on, if like, you're able to pull something off, and they, they won't understand it completely, but then they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Well, you know, since you, they were a naysayer for the 10 years prior, you know, they really, they did, they didn't advance you to a point in time where you could be successful with what you want to do. So, um, I really try, I try, well, not always, but I do have to have a small group of people that are just, you know, they're all, we're all kind of pulling for one another. And, and the other thing too is this like, okay, you know, say you have a friend who's a musician or something and it, maybe you don't particularly care for his music. Mm -hmm. Shut up. <laughs> right. Go there. Yeah. Be supportive. Of, mm -hmm. of him or her, right? So, eh, that's not my really genre. Yeah, I'm really not a preacher. Uh, you know, you know, I really don't like jazz. Okay, for one night, it won't kill you. Um, yeah. because especially if this is a, someone who's supportive of you. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's one thing I do love about New York, I have to say, is that so many people here, and I love Chicago, not like Chicago, but, but there's a, a real sense of community because people wear multiple hats just to get by every day, all the things you need, you need to do. You know, nobody's just a waiter, they're an actor, they're a playwright, they're an, <laughs> there's just, yes. everybody's doing, doing something else. Mm -hmm. So um, I really encourage people to wherever you can, even if you have, just have a, uh, you know, one or two people in your life that are, support you in your art, it means a lot. 
because it's otherwise, you know, it's, it's lonely and unfulfilling. Let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Yeah. You know, we don't want to cough an ear over it, but you know. yeah, that's true. I mean, when I decided to start my own business, I had, I looked around and I'm like, I don't really have people around me who do this. I don't have other women who are doing this. Like I got to go find them. Um, mm -hmm. and it was the best thing I did, you know, because it's, it's an art business, but like you said, when you're really, it's like self-publishing. If you're an artist, you're, you're a business person too. And you got to find those people who can not only support your art, but also those people to support you in the business end of things. Um, Absolutely. It, yeah. it, 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 it takes a village. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's next for you? Um, well, uh, I've been talking to a couple people, and this, is, this has been going on for a while, really even before the book, the book came out. Uh, people are always saying like, oh, this would make a great show, this would make a great play, this would make a good series or something, and which is just so out of my <laughs> realm of possibilities. Um, but I've been talking to people about that. And if, um, if somebody thinks that um, a couple of these stories might make nice little, good little films or something that we could, we could pitch to in a streaming capacity, um, I'm open for that. I'm not really one for like doing something over and over and over. I always look for, I want to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, though um, I also understand uh, that from the, you know, uh, you know, not wood here, the thousands of people who've bought my book, they want another one. I hear that a lot. <laughs> um, and it would, I would, it would be a disservice if I didn't, if I didn't. And um, so I, sh I will do that. Um, uh, but again, it has to be, it has to be challenging for me um, mm -hmm. that I can get, that I can get excited about it. So I, yeah. uh, Nothing. I mean, I've been, I've been self-employed since I was, you know, 23, 24. Um, so there's always another project in the works. And admittedly, sometimes these th things take a very long time. I wish I, wish I was more efficient. Um, but I'm doing a lot of different things. Yeah, and so, yeah, um, different things. Uh, my band will have an album out this year. We will absolutely, that is they're mixing it down right now, and I had a release last year in uh, Canada with uh, with a, with another band. And it, I got and you know, next month I turn sixty years old, and I think it's a hoot that you know people in their thirties are approaching me to you know write a song with them. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> That's great. I'm I mean, I, I'm relevant, but I'm relevant because of things I was releasing things in the eighties. Mm -hmm. um, when I when I had a the house music label that I sold, and um, and the internet keeps everything somewhat alive. It's it's, uh, it's always scary about the, for all of life that happened before the invention of the internet. Yeah. That that all, that always disturbs me because wow, there's just <laughs> the big world that happened before the internet, and people kind of use that as the cutoff because yeah. if I didn't find it online, it didn't happen. It didn't exist. Yeah, Unt <laughs> untrue. You know. So, um, so a lot of irons in the fire, uh, and we shall see. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think a lot of really creative people have a lot of creative projects going on, and it just keeps feeding each other and uh, making everything a little bit more informed and rich from the other experiences is, is what I find. Yeah, and, it, and, and for this, for me, it, it seems like it's all kind of come together um, mm -hmm. very nicely. Now what I, I, I don't think I could have handled this uh, I would say, but even when, when I, I was writing, you know, when I was in my 20s, I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> That's yeah. really why I, I don't think I was that good. And mm -hmm. I think I'm much better now because I had something to say and I needed a lifetime of, of falling on my face yeah. uh, to, uh, to appreciate uh, when things go well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Well, that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much, Dwayne. This has been so much fun. Really oh, sure. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure.